Well, Thursday, greetings to everybody. If you're watching me live, it is uh, Thursday, and uh, I went at 4.44, just a cool time, was uh, going through different uh, uh, different perplexing uh, uh, questions, and uh, matter of fact, I was thinking about, do I uh, even go on tonight? I was on last uh, yesterday, and, and that's a little bit abnormal for me, but... Um, I was, we were going to be in James tonight. That's where we were in our Bible study last night with our, our, our folks at Beams of Light. And I was going to continue there, but the Lord just, I, I felt like the Lord just kept taking me back to a, a, a passage. And that's why I put six powerful words. Six powerful words. And uh, you, you may already figure out what those six powerful words are. Uh, but if you hadn't, we're going to be going to the prodigal, the story of the prodigal son. That's what we call it. I like to I like to say it's really th at least three different stories in that it's it's as much about the older brother as it is the prodigal son we call his younger brother, and then it's most definitely I believe about the father, and the scripture starts out you can find it in Luke fifteen and and by the way thanks for being with me today uh, anybody else have one of those days I I had one of those days and and really it was because of where was where my mind was. It was where uh, my perspective was. That's what really got me, I guess, along these lines of a, of a very familiar passage. In fact, I was, I was going to go on with you this uh, evening and, and talk about being off the mark and uh, using uh, my scope as, a, as an illustration. I, I like illustrations, illustration sermons. I like, I like bringing things into uh, into the sermon to kind of stick with us. And, and uh, so, I don't know, we may even say just a little bit about that, but I don't, I don't plan on spending a lot of time with you uh, tonight. I just, I just want to get something across because I really believe somebody needs to hear this. Um, where we were going to be is Ephesians, the first chapter, and it starts out talking about all the trials and the things that we're going through. And everybody goes through trials in life. We're going through things, uh, it seems like from one uh, crisis to another in uh, in in America in uh, overseas. Uh, you just it's just it's a it's amazing. And if we're not careful, we'll get in a bad spot that will keep us in such a way that we have a hard time digging ourselves out. And so I, I want to share with you the passage is Luke fifteen. That's where the product the story of the prodigal son is. Luke, the 15th chapter, and he starts there with verse 11. These are the words of Christ, and he says, A certain man had two sons. Now, uh, and the younger, you all know the story, but let me, allow me, if I could, just to insert a few things. First of all, I, I want to show you one thing. Um, let's see. I don't know who said this, but it's, it's worth putting on the screen. And I'm just going to leave it up on the screen while uh, I read some scriptures. It takes an external, uh, sometimes, and I don't know who said it again, but uh, kudos to you. Uh, it takes an external disruption to bring about an e internal reflection. And I want us to reflect tonight. Somebody needs to reflect. I think we all need to reflect. The certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to this father, Father, give me the portion of goods that, that falleth to me. And he divided into them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, you can liken the inheritance that the father gave to the younger son to a lot of things. You can, you can liken it into your faith, to your destiny, uh, really a, a lot of things. And so that I want to ask you to ask yourself this question quite honestly and, and a brazenly way to, to say, Am I wasting? Am I wasting my life in areas that is not going to take me to the destiny that I belong? Am I doing things? Am I am I finding myself in, even in a mental in a mental state that is not allowing me to really become who I am? Right, we're going to find out. I think you'll you'll agree with me. The prodigal son, this younger boy, uh, he goes, he gets the inheritance, and he goes and he thinks. Here's what I believe. He thinks he's going to be able to take that inheritance, that lump sum uh, money and all of that he had, and his life is going to change. Well, it did for just as long as the money was there. 
But once the money ran out, we know that it was a different story. He went chasing something that I don't believe he was ever to be a part of. That's that's not who that's not who he was. His father remained the same, by the way, and we're going to end just with a, a quick scripture to remind us how good God is. But reading on, and not many days, he the, he gathered all, took his journey, and he and he he uh, there he wasted his substance. And when he had spent all, he had spent everything he had basically. There arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Well, so you, you you've run out of money, and now there's a famine. Not very good timing. And he went and joined himself. And he, I can hear somebody go, yeah, that's about the way things happen to me. I, I feel the same way. Sometimes it's like, man, you know, can I catch a break? But you guys, we, we got to understand that we've got to understand that life happens. And we got to understand that everybody's probably, everybody's had those situations where you just start out a day and everything's good. And then by the end of the day, you're like, man, what in the world happened? The wheels fell off. Every, every wheel fell off of this vehicle I was driving. He went on and he, and he joined himself to a citizen of that country. Now, he was in a different country than he was supposed to be. We, we, you know the story. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details I have before. I could now, but I, don't want, I, don't, I just want to get a couple of points across to us in this Bible study tonight. Uh, he, he was, he was in, a, in, a, in a country he did not belong, and he was doing things that, that were not anything to his character or who he was. Not that there's anything wrong with the feeding the swine and the other country he went to. It's just not where he was supposed to be. Okay, you with me? That's not who this young man was. And so he went and fain would have filled his belly, verse 16, with the husks of the swine. I mean, he was going to eat the husk of the swine. And again, his character or his upbringing, he was, that's not, that's not the kind of food that he was supposed to be eating. But he says no man gave him. And so nobody was even giving him the, the worst of the worst that he was. He was in a bad place. He had dug himself a hole. He had, hear what I'm saying, he dug himself a hole. Didn't have anything to do with dad back at, back at the ranch. Didn't even have anything to do with his older brother who was, uh, uh, that's a whole nother story and a whole nother Bible study. Had everything to do with a bad choice and, and, and the consequences of the bad choices that he made, they were his. They were his to own. They, they were his. But, but here's, here's, the big, here's the big part. The big part is this, and when he came to himself, that's where we're at, verse 17. This might be the most powerful, the most powerful six words. I don't want to say they're in the Bible, but they are powerful. <laughs> and maybe they're the most powerful six words that you need to hear, you need to repeat, you need to say in reflection yourself. Because if you're in that place, I want to say, when he came to himself, what changed? It wasn't dad back home. It wasn't the older brother. There was still a famine. I mean, here's here's what here's what really happened. It got so bad that he didn't have any any more choices. The money was run out. The friends he had plenty of friends when he had money, but now all of a sudden everything had changed. And you know, it's a wake up call. The church. I believe has many have come to themselves. That many of the church have come to themselves. I would have to tell you that when I came to myself, I want. I would have to tell you that I, I have turned a corner. I I woke up myself. I not the you know not that, but I came to a place where I realized I was just been. I was just peddling on the on the treadmill and and getting nowhere. We can only preach to the choir so much. We can only sing to ourselves so much. I love singing in the choir, but I mean, in the, in the choir. I love singing in the shower, but for, for, for what reason? Here's the point I want you to get tonight. When he came to himself, he woke up. I mean, he came to himself. That was his alarm. 
I don't know what it takes to squeeze you. I don't know how much it takes to get you to a place where you say, you know what? I'm sick and tired of this place where I don't belong. You know what? I'm sick and tired of trying to make it on my own. I've been doing it all by myself and it's not working. He came to himself and here's what he realized. He realized in reflection Good grief. The hired servants back at dad's house have more to eat. They have plenty enough to eat. He wasn't even talking about the bond servants. The bond servants were those that were kind of like family, and they were the ones that doled out the, to the hired servants. And then there was even another rank of and file that just did the per diem. And he wasn't even talking about them. He's just saying, look, I can go back, and here's what he, here's what he did. He he gave up on the love that his dad had. He gave up on any inheritance that his dad had. He gave up his rights as being a son because he determined in himself, I'm going to just go back and just take care of my belly. I'm going to at least have shelter over my head. He didn't realize that nothing had changed back home. His dad was still looking for him. His dad still loved him. His father, and I. And now I'm going to change it to father because I want us to get an understanding of who our heavenly father is. Father has not moved. Our heavenly father is not the one. He's still looking for us to come to ourself of our own free will to come back home. Do you need to come back home? Do you need to come to yourself and say, I'm, I'm done with this. This is not who I am. And I think that's the reflection that this prodigal son had. He looks at everything that's going on and he's like, this is not me. This is not, this is not who I am. And he decided that he was willing to even take a much lesser role back at the ranch with his father. But you know how the story goes. He came to himself. He said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? <coughs> Excuse me. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, and before thee, and I'm mo no more worthy. Listen to this. I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Don't just stay in the pit and grieve because of the consequences. Don't just stay in the pit and grieve because of the choices that you've made. Come to yourself. Get out of the pit. Leave the swine junk, leave all of that there, and come back home. Come back home. We know that what happened was the father was looking for him. The father was looking for him and came running to him, and we know the end of the story. There was a celebration. Let's put on a robe on him. Let's get shoes on his feet. Let's give him the signet ring that says, everything that I have is yours. The love of the Father stayed the same. Maybe you have a incorrect perspective of the Father. Perspective is like this scope. The scope I had an aunt that was quite the squirrel hunter. And we, uh, we had, uh, we had, if you've never had squirrel and dumplings, uh, don't say you don't like it if, if you've not had it because it's pretty incredible. But when you sight in that, 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 that gun, if it's off, you're shooting at that target, this is what you're looking through. You're looking through the scope. One way to get it back to the mark is you dial in the scope you raise it you push it over but everything stays here the same solid and wherever that mark is that you're hitting that's where you move the scope to and now all of a sudden it's sighted in if you're missing the mark it may not be God, your church, 
your pastor, friends. It might be you. It might be me. It might be a point where I need to dial in and get myself back on mark. Ephesians, or I'm sorry, I said Ephesians. James, the first chapter. And if I said Ephesians earlier, I apologize. I, we've kind of been everywhere, man. But I just close with this. Let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And you go on over to verse 16, chapter 1 of James. Do not err, my King James Version says. It's actually do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and perfect gift, now hear that, Every good gift and perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. The Father of lights, the sun, the moon, the stars. We didn't get up today and the sun go elsewhere. We didn't get it up. We, we didn't get up last night. We've had a full moon and go, man, where'd the moon go? It's not there. Yes, it is because when God does, he's a consistent God. He's constant. Every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above and cometh from the Father of lights who, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will he beget us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You realize that you and I as born again are the first step? We are the first step in God redeeming all of creation. That's a whole nother message and another story for another time. Thank you for being with me. Thank you as always for sharing. Thank you for the thumbs up. God bless you. I pray that you can say, when I came to myself, I got out of that mire and I came home to Jesus. God bless you.